Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, 1010, uh, as we gather together again today, uh, it's Friday. Uh, I'm grateful for that. Um, I guess <laughs> it's a, kind of a day like any other day uh, with the sequestering, uh, but we're glad we can be together here today um, as we as we come together as God's people. Uh, at this time, uh, each day, it gives us something uh, to look forward to, uh, something to focus on uh, in the midst of uh, what we're what we're all dealing with. Uh, at this time, and we're all, all in this uh, together. Um, you know, this is as I've said before. It it doesn't uh, it doesn't discriminate, and uh, we're seeing more and more of that uh, each day uh, as um, people in our lives, people we are close to, uh, people are being uh, touched by a coronavirus, um, and so. Um, I think we're we're feeling it. We're beginning to feel it uh, more and more e each day, and I think more and more each day we need to uh, hear again uh, God's God's word for us. And so we're going to turn our attention again to uh, Romans chapter five. We've been looking at Romans chapter five uh, this this week, and. Uh, we're going to look at uh, one section today and another section tomorrow to finish it up for the, for the week. Uh, and so today we're going to be looking at Romans 5, verses 6 through 8. So if you'd grab your Bible, uh, be ready to highlight and grab a few thoughts from, from that. Well, one of the things uh, about this 10-10 time is the verse that it, it reminds us of, John 10-10, uh, where Jesus says, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, but I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly, have it to the full. And so we recognize again today that we are people of life, even as we find ourselves in a world of, of trouble. Um, and, and it seems to be, as the news continues to, to say, it's getting worse and worse. It's going to get worse before it, it gets better. We, we find ourselves in a in a world of, of trouble. And yet, as we learned yesterday, we can be people who rejoice even in our sufferings because we have a God, a God who gives us hope. As he seeks to develop us and develop our character so that we can be more and more like Jesus. Uh, as we said, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given to us. We are people of hope, but it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, when life seems so out of out of control. Uh, but here's the thing, uh, we can be people of calm. That's what we've been talking about over these last couple of weeks. We can be people of calm and people with a cause. That, that gives us direction in, when things are out of control. And so today, uh, as we look at Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8, we're going to discover again why it is that we can be people of calm. And I'll give you a little a tool today to help you uh, to be a person who is calm in the midst of this troubling time. So let me read these words from Romans 5, verses 6 through 8. Paul writes, You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now one of the words that stood out to me as I read those, those scripture passages this morning was the word powerless. I don't know about you, but I must say I feel powerless. Um, no control, don't know what's coming next, 
um, don't have answers, uh, powerless. And as a result of that, there's a whole lot of stress that goes along with it. And it's not just me who's feeling powerless. It is all of us. We're all in the same exact boat today. But here's the thing, as followers of Jesus, we can also feel hopeful. And I feel hopeful today, and so can you. Listen to those words of, of Paul again. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We have a Savior. A Savior who reveals the very heart of our God. A God of love. A God who sent His Son. Who paid the price for us. That we could be made right with God once and for all. It's the right time. It's the right time. Today is the right time to hear again this message of hope that we have a God who loves us. God demonstrates His love for us. He makes it real for us today. That while we were still powerless, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So let's be people of calm today. This is going to be our cause. In the midst of so much stress, let's be people of calm, and I'm going to use uh, some ideas from, from Max Licato um, and his, his book um, that came out uh, a couple of years ago, and we, I preached on it uh, last summer, I think it was. Um, he gives us a, some help, how we can be calm, and the acronym CALM, the C. The C stands for Celebrate God's Goodness. We have much to be thankful for. Man, do we have much to be thankful for. And so today, let's not forget that, but let's give thanks. Let's celebrate God's goodness to us. Let's not focus on the problems, but celebrate God's goodness. And we can make a whole list of them, and I talked about before last week. So C, celebrate. A, ask God for help. We are powerless. He is not. He is God and he has victory over sin and death and the grave. And we claim that victory in him today. He is not powerless. He is powerful. And so we, we leave our concerns, L, we leave our concerns with God. He's powerful, powerful to save. And trusting in that, we, we lay our concerns, we leave our concerns with him. And let him work, even in the midst of so much that we cannot understand. Finally, let's meditate on, on good things, on godly things. We talked about that last week in our, our look at uh, um, Philippians 4. Focus on those, those godly things today. Yesterday, uh, we asked the question, what are you going to, going to focus on? Where are you going to put your time and your energy? Or is it going to be wasted time or is it going to be invested time? A time where we can give glory to God in who we are and what we do. A time where we can reveal to our neighbors who this God of ours is in the way that we treat them. We ask God to show us what our purpose can be in all of this. Take a moment after our time today and just be still. Uh, be still and know that God is God and be still and, and listen uh, for what his purpose is for you in this time. And as you do, remember what our cause is for today. It is to be people of calm. People who celebrate and ask and learn and meditate. We go to the Lord in prayer today. We go uh, with some concerns on our hearts, many concerns on our hearts, no doubt. 
um, as, we, as we look uh, and trust in, in God's uh, care for us uh, today. Um, we've got on our list Marianne, a neighbor of ours, uh, that she would have peace. She uh, is struggling what to do with her job, to go to work, not to go to work. And so we pray for all those in that circumstance uh, as they're willing to step out and, and risk uh, not just their own uh, lives, but their families. Um, and so we pray for, for uh, peace in the midst of those, those questions and if God would give guidance. We pray that God would pass over, uh, that he would pass over uh, our, our family, our friends, our neighborhood, our community, our world, uh, as, as, as we pray for his protection. We pray for, for those uh, families whose family members, brothers-in-laws, and uh, relationships are dealing with um, coronavirus, uh, for Kendra Murphy, uh, for Ann Swank. We pray uh, also today for Tom Glenn and his health concerns and all who are dealing with health concerns uh, that God would watch over and protect them in the midst of this. We pray for those who are dealing with loss, uh, for the Muzel family uh, here in Westmont, a uh, po former police officer who passed away yesterday, so we pray for that family. Um, let's bow our heads to pray. Father, we thank you that you give us calm, uh, that you reveal to us that while we were powerless, you are still God, and that you are on your throne and that you are good that you demonstrated this love for us in a very real way, that you sent your Son, who stood in our place, who became the sacrifice for our sin, and who gives us life, because he is victorious over death and the grave. And as we put our faith in him, we recognize that even when life seems so out of control. And we pray for those people who are seeking to make decisions about work and what they should do. Uh, we just ask, Lord, that, that you would give them protection, give them wisdom. Uh, we thank you for their willingness uh, to sacrifice on behalf of others, uh, for the good of others. We, we appreciate that so very much, Lord, and we ask that you would give us a heart to do the same, that we need not live in, in fear but in, in victory. We pray, Lord, that this pandemic would pass over, uh, that, that, Lord, uh, you would bring protection over all people. Uh, we pray, Lord, that this virus would, would die out uh, and that it would not affect any more people. Uh, we know that's a big prayer, but we know that you are a big God. We pray for the families of those who are affected by this, um, people's lives who are being affected by this. It's coming closer and closer to us each and every day. People we know, people we love, people we care about. And so, Lord, we lift them up and we pray, pray for healing for them. We pray for the doctors uh, who are bringing uh, services and care, first responders, those who are studying this virus, trying to find a cure. And we just, we ask, Lord, that you would, uh, that you would watch over and protect them we pray for those who are dealing with health issues uh, in the midst of all of this, and we pray, Lord, you would bring healing to them. We pray for those who are, are shut in, uh, who are alone at this time, um, and just, Lord, assure them that, that you are, are with them. Pray for those who deal with the reality, the consequences of this disease and the consequences of sin, that the wages of sin is death. The, the cost of sin is death, but Jesus you have paid that price, and so we can live as people of life today, trusting that no matter what happens, uh, that you are powerful and that you are good, and that we can trust you in any and all circumstances. Lord, we lift this all up to you today um, as we pray in, in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll meet again to, tomorrow, uh, finish up our look at uh, Romans 5, 5, Romans 5, uh, 9. Uh, 9 to 11 with a quick uh, brief look at that uh, you're welcome to join us on Sunday morning a live stream uh, 1010 uh, as we gather together uh, corporately for worship um, if you know somebody who's not on Facebook and you want them to see our daily devotions you can have them go to our website BethelWestmont.org 
click on the tab right on the opening splash page that says go to our YouTube channel. Uh, click on that. It will take you to a picture of our church building and up upper left hand corner is a picture of my smiling face. If you would just click on that, it will take you directly to my face or my YouTube channel. And there you will see uh, daily these daily devotions posted there. Um, pray for all of you today. Uh, God's blessings to you. Um, and uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.